Hello, welcome to Talk Audio TV here at the O2. This is Adam Rayner doing what is possibly the biggest hi-fi review of my entire career. It's to do with Mayer Sound. Now, being big and hench, well I was, I used to be what's called a humper, which is one of the people who moves great big piles of equipment in and out of tour venues when the band arrives, because they can't take everybody to move everything. Where the hell was I going with that? I have no idea, so I'll start again. Hello, this is Adam Rayner for Talk Audio TV, and today I'm at the O2 doing the biggest hi-fi review in the world. I'm looking at some uh, products made by Maya Sound. Um, this is take two, because I completely lost me thread. Back in the 80s, I was, I was a humper. I was a, a PA mover around at a venue where I was at college, and then afterwards ended up as a monitor engineer. But the main thing is, is that during that time, this new brand of PA appeared called Maya, or is it Maya, depending on uh, whose pronunciation you use. And it was just louder, clearer and more amazing than everybody else's. These days, it's known as the loudest in the world. And the chap who's been my mate since he showed up at a Max Power magazine uh, event with a lot more PA than I was used to, known simply as the Metal Overlord, has got me access to just come literally do a review on this Maya Sound PA kit. And the reason I particularly got the horn <laughs> is because there are two kinds of bass enclosures in this system. One lot's got two 18s and it's just known as a subwoofer. And one lot's got two 18s and, well, we'd call it an infrasonic fear register transducer. It's known as the VLFC, or the Very Low Frequency Control Unit. And it goes from 10 to 36 hertz. OK, slight apologies for what's going to be a bit of a uh, 4K Blair Witch production, simply because I ain't quite got the lighting, and we are indoors in a big old room. But this, in the flesh is a Lion M enclosure. If I pan back, we'll see that it's attached to a bunch of flying hardware. And there's not a lot to see except for a grill. The fact that there's four of these puppies in a stack. Now these are your mid-range to highs type product. They are quote unquote only two-way, which is something engineers today show particularly appreciates. So it keeps it nice and clean in the uh, crucial upper mid band where we can tell things are going on. So as you can see, I'm here long before the public are. They're all busy hanging up bits of kit. The bonkers thing is that Mickey Flanagan, East End uh, comedian, who was in here last night, is also going to be in here tomorrow night. Which means all this stuff has to come out and go back in again. They offered Mr. Flanagan the use of their kit. Only thing is, he uses proscenium arch, and of course, this act is in the round. I'm feeling severely underdressed without a hard hat on. Yep, there's the magical logo. Is it Maya Sound or Maya Sound? Warranty void if removed. I've seen that on the back of some uh, consumer electronics. But yeah, this gear is. Uh, no user serviceable parts inside. The fact is, is that the uh, sound companies send technicians out with their kit. Certainly at this level. With a bit of luck, I'm going to get to interview one. Okay, here's a badge on the back of a box with two 18s in. It's exactly the same footprint and enclosure size as the VLFC. This is the subwoofer. They've got loads of these. My kind of transducers. You can see from here that they would appear to have a linen edge. They're heavily ribbed, massive dust dome in the middle. That is an 18 of major hench proportions. Big piece of how these boxes work is the baffle inside. I'm hoping to get some data, data about that because these aren't just two 18s in a box. Way more scary than that. Same size enclosure as the VLFC, except these have a pass band that, well, goes down to uh, 65 odd hertz and upwards to meet the mids and tops, whereas the VLFC <laughs> only goes from uh, 36 hertz and down. Okay, what we have here now are the uh, Leopard Line Array enclosure. They're a trapezoidal enclosure, and uh, well, you can see there's loads and loads of uh, rigging mounting options. 
You can have them uh, so that they disagree with each other and don't actually have any uh, interaction going on because they've uh, got no gap here and that would make it a bit of a splay out. Or you can have them like this, with parallel faces. What that means is that they're going to fling a whole load further. Four of them all strapped into a little hanging doodah. You're going to get sheer volumes of loudspeakers being used at the gig from Mick in a bit later time. But right now, they're still busy stringing everything together. This is one of the uh, heaviest rigs ever to tour. I have issues with hanging all of the big loudspeakers up simply because, well, there are some ceilings that won't have it. Meanwhile, Zooming on in, it's getting awfully dark up there. Let's uh, zoom back. You can see there's a big old array of loudspeakers hanging up there. Right, well, I've fully infiltrated production. Uh, this is a gentleman called Oscar whose surname sounds a bit like the company name, but it's, it's uh, Mayer, not Meyer. It's not spelled M E Y R because you're from Scandinavia, are you not, dear boy? Yeah, Sweden. Sweden, yes, actually, don't just say Scandinavia. That's the sort of ignorant thing English people say. <laughs> Absolutely. So what's, what would be your job description with, uh, with Meyer Audio, sir? Uh, my title is Senior Technical Support Specialist, uh, which means I handle uh, show support, like uh -huh. uh, on this show. Uh, it could be trade shows, it could be uh, demonstrating our product, it could be... A pretty wide uh, brief. Custom education for new customers. Um, so there's, there's training the sessions that I saw on the website and so forth, things like yeah, that. Exactly. Gotcha. So you a really varied job. One day Metallica, the next day Pastor, whatever his name is, in a big church. Yeah, could be. Wow, that's so cool. And um, basically, uh, I know that the uh, Meyer Audio products ain't what they call user serviceable. You don't have end users changing things or fixing things and part of the secrecy with that is it costs you doesn't it they have to send a you with the stuff in case of any unforeseen or confusions i guess um or even well specifically arrangements <laughs> the ground by the white pink, is that pink noise or white noise that's pink noise that's pink equal intensities of sound across all frequencies cumulatively by time yes you yes <laughs> And I know you can hear me over it because my voice is way closer to the diaphragm. Yup, we're here while we're setting up the PA. I'll be interviewing this guy a bit later on, but for now, let's leave it for the testers. Oscar, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. What you're seeing there is 18, 18 inch subwoofers being lifted up into the air. All ready for tonight here at the O2. That is some boost power. Is that here in the area they call front of house? Of course, because uh, this outfit plays in the round. It's not at the front of anything, it's just tucked away to one side. Various bits of kit. Including a CD player, a mighty Midas XL8 mixing desk, which doesn't have as many knobs and buttons on it as you might imagine, because there's an awful lot of what you call soft keys and those five TV screens. Well, I made a little video about just that desk the last time I visited Mick at work. Something like, oh, he told me how many equalizers he was using. There were lots and lots. Let's come around here. We get to the. Uh, no, he's busy working on setting up the kit here. Left you a picture. Chat with Oscar, who I've been mithering about the tech stuff, or at least as much as I'm allowed to find out. Uh, 20 feet. Right now we should be told, I'll take this to uh, 
Looking at there is a rack of uh, Galileo galaxies. Um, they're the uh, Maya Sound controller for all their loudspeaker products. We'll uh, find out a little bit, a little bit more about exactly what that does a bit later on. But uh, it's important, obviously, for the operator front of the house to see what's going on there, and that's explaining to the operator exactly what all these speakers are doing. Line array speakers being slung up into the ceiling there. So, didn't have the headphones on before. <laughs> More pink noise. I can hear myself. Lovely. Testing, testing. One, two. Both of which were picked up beautifully by my lovely large diaphragm stereo microphone jets. I can hear me. Headphones set. On the left of your picture, Mr. Mitus, known as the Metal Overlord by his deepest fans, which is uh, always makes him giggle. On the right-hand side of your picture, looking completely rattled and knackered. And <laughs> now, this is Jay, who is uh, well. You're a crucial cog. You're. Would you describe yourself as mixed oppo, Jay? Am I an oppo? Oppo. Oh, no, are you an oppo? You, you, you yeah, said it's once. An oppo. I'm just the guy that fixes it when he breaks it. That was what I was going to say when I asked once. It's like Mick breaks it, you fix it. Yeah, I do tend to press the wrong buttons sometimes. <laughs> and as you can see, there's plenty of buttons to press. There certainly are, yes. The uh, Midas XL8 is... Um, Still about. And uh, how long have you guys been using it then? Because it's... Uh, 2008 was kind of when we really took it on. 2007 was when we first trialled it. Excellent. Wow. I did... Uh, it was about then when, um, when it was quite new. When I came and uh, took a bit of video last time, I bothered to come and see it work, which is lazy, Basically, only yeah. when you're in my hometown, isn't it? Um, how many equaliser racks are there virtually on stage? That was a question last time. There's dozens and dozens of 31, 30 band EQs that you're using on stage, aren't there? Uh, yeah, I mean... Whoa, there you go. <laughs> I love that. One button press. One button press. And I even knew which button it was. Yeah, man. And that's why you're the boss. That's, and of uh, course, with these, you just click on them to see them full size. Yes. Now, last time when I asked about this, I hadn't realised that, yeah, it's great. It's a little bit like um, everything is just a couple of dozen clicks away because there is still an analog need for this little thing which I discover behind you guys which is the um, uh, remote control for the EQ which is for said EQ yes helix rapide did I just select oh mate it moves it moves excellent Excellent. So that means you can call up each uh, EQ rack and then make manual adjustments using all of the skills well, that you I developed mean, over the years, I guess. If you look at this one here, and I move this here. There it goes. Let's zoom in another little bit there. I'm sure it's picking up on the 4K. My monitor's only small, but there we go. That's how it works. Cool. Or I could always go like this, of course, move that and he's not filming for me. I am, I am. It's still running. What you can't see because Mick's arms are the way there is that there are two track balls on the desk there. So it's like any decent mixing desk, there's a whole bunch of different routes to control Loads of ways to do it. Yes, and every engineer's got their own sort of flavour. So, uh... so yes, this is the first gig of the, uh, well, the European end of your tour, isn't it? Uh, this is the second leg of the European tour. Yeah. Oh, right. Gotcha. Um, we're a little bit behind, as you can see. It's 20 past two in the afternoon. And it's 
still a lot of work going on and I still haven't made any noise yet. Oh, right. That was the, uh, after all, it's one of the big things is because, do they still call them lampies and noise boys? It's getting dark over there. Well, those are the polite names, yeah. <laughs> so there's still this thing, it's about like, it's like when policemen call firemen bucket, or like knuckle dragging bucket monkeys. I don't know if we go that far. No, that's what you... policemen call firemen. Oh, okay. Yeah, they call that other sort of policemen. The, the, lampy, funeral, the yes. lampy PA thing has a bit kind of got away. Yeah, because you're from. technical and you have to do the same thing at the same time. Well, it's all much cleverer now, so. And which was really me being a childish way to introduce the fact that. The box I have the horn for the most is your very low frequency control element. My super slow. Starts at 10 cycles. Apparently. Or 11 or 12 or 13, depending on which spec you read. Well, they're going to go from 11 to 35 sort of yes. area, which is where Maya's new slogan at the minute is ours goes down to 11 rather than goes up to 11. Ours <laughs> goes down to 11. Oh, sorry, that's so bloody cool. That's great. It's yeah, it is. yours, isn't it? Ours goes down to I think 11. You came up with that. I think I have a headline for me piece. <laughs> That's it, a joke about a British between me and Bob, comedy that. movie, yeah. Spinal Tap, and, uh, and that's one more. Oh, why is it that at no level in rock and roll do people ever stop making jokes about that bloody film? There's something about it. It's never not cool, is it? Because it's, it's a just... classic. We've all lived it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing else I can add to that. Guys, have a bloody great gig. Enjoy Cheers. the rest of the tour. I'm going to go and geek out, actually, on the... Uh, the equipment and stuff, which means I'm probably going to uh, ask that man Oscar all kinds of mad questions and uh, ask Oscar mad questions. Yeah, and the only Oscar's thing, your guy. The only thing I'd really, really, I'd, I'd, I'd probably actually arrange for oral sex with somebody. It'll do it myself if I could only just get to. Sorry, that was a bit much more than you really wanted. I just got this. I always used to test a microphone. It was that one. Hello, yes, but it wouldn't be one two. I've I've got a different thing, which is. Uh, you're insane. <sighs> what can I say? Back to speakers. Huge privilege, as you can hear. I'm in the PA. Which stood next to the chap who'd normally do this called Bob. So, Bob, how long have you been doing this for these guys? Ten years. Ten years of one, two, or saying something more interesting. Yeah, right around there. Fabulous. But this is just for my listeners to be able to hear. Me being echoed around the O2. Thanks ever so much. Awesome. Although I never used to say one, two, because I did this at a very low level in pubs and clubs. So I always used to say the name of a hill on North Island, New Zealand, in Maori, which is... I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. I'll leave you in peace. Checking the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, two. Vogel one. Hey, I got it. Can you make sure all the eight knobs are 15? Vogel one. Yeah, hey, one, two. Vogel number one. Vogel one. Yeah, hey, one, two, two. Yeah, it's yes, one, two, two. Vocal number one. of the boxes that have given me the armor guards. There's two 18s in each one. And uh, well, depending on which specification you read, depends on how low you think they go. 
11 hertz is the uh, bottom cutoff. And Jay has told me, that's uh, Mix Oppo, that the marketeers at uh, Fire Sound say, ours doesn't go up to 11, ours goes down to 11. The baddest, deepest, most insane woofers in the whole of Pro Audio. These are the VLFCs. Wonder how much mileage of electric string, how many kilometers of cables. This is the back of the uh, mighty, mighty VLFCs. That's all it says on the back. Oh, there it is. <laughs> These dudes, despite the safety equipment, chief requirement is not actually having an adrenal gland. Uh, oh, bye, dude. Yep, just here. Uh, these are the people that make everything happen because, uh, well, they're hanging in the ceiling. And I have to tell you, with uh, these boxes of video, they move. They weigh a fair bit. They're incredibly bright. And the ceiling has to withstand four times their weight if there's an emergency stop. And that has limited the amount of stuff that can be hung in the air. Which is why a whole bunch of these woofers have had to be hung up. Up there in the uh, triple stack thing. Those are three stacks of three 1100 VLCs. That's a lot of 18 inch woofers up there going boom. So the people right there, they're going to get some good bass. Um, the way that that stepped array works is the LF wobbles downwards as well. There's some heavy duty physics going on, way more complicated than that which we talk about in the stuff I normally write about. It's kind of cool. Here on the floor of the arena, that looks like support band's kit. Mm, pretty lights. I like the boxes they stood on. Damn it. I was in catering when they tested the uh, chunk of the show that really uses these because this uh, measurable fraction of the three trucks of audio is used only in fairly brief parts of the show. Those parts intended to create the fear register. They're moving stop. The A stop is the Let's say we need power. <laughs> So, but you have to allow for that for an e-stop, as they call it. There must be the proprietor of the taxi. To stop it drop. Oh, it's, it won't move it without... Like a counter well, it won't stop without power, but when they normally come to a stop, they slow down and stop. They don't just go... They actually go through a slow down. So it takes that big pull out of it. But of course, if you have an emergency stop, where they're all moving, and all of a sudden the power goes off, and they just stop, that's such stretching of the chain is like times four the weight just for that split second until it settles. I mean the curve is just like heavy. But of course you have to make sure that you're not going to pull the roof if that happens. So we are very heavy, which is why the PA has moved out towards the edges because we couldn't put any more in the middle. Hence the fact that the TMRA went to yeah, just to spread through. the load. Yeah, yeah. we had to leave that. Uh, two other motor controls, Megasu. Um, I've got two. So, and, and you 
you go in there. I'll put all We've had to do other clever shit where we've made these arrays would normally be 15, at least 15 to 18 boxes deep. Yeah. We couldn't do that. So to make sure we can reach the floor with not having so many boxes, we have these infill boxes, which are those other smaller, yes, pointing yeah. straight yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That allows us oh, not, to have to, yeah. not, not to have to make them longer to reach the ground. So it just gives that into the drop. Then. Well, it's, yeah, well, we don't have to bend that array so yeah. much. And to get that bend, you need a lot of boxes. Yeah. Oh, Bob it's McCarthy, a uh, designer guy. There's a lot of designers involved, people yeah. who are smart people. Yeah. Yeah. And they've looked at it and gone Well, everybody right, you get that kind of has their own agenda. And then you go at it with your own agenda. A and collection then of PhDs eventually on it. you have to go, okay, now we have to give. And people come to you and go, can you just move this a little bit? Because if you can, we can do this. And then so you can see it. Okay. But when you need something to happen, you can nail back to them and say, you got your we really you. need to go. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're a little bit hands tied with audio compared to lighting. Um, you know, our stuff has to be arrayed around the arena. We can only put it in a few places as per the design without going completely. So, but theirs is a little more uh, flexible, I think. Yeah. How cute are these little things buzzing around? They're not on strings. They don't need a specific cubic like the parrot ones. Well, I'm an expert because I met the bloke in catering. Well, the guy who uh, comes along from there. But this is a piece of the what goes on. Cute little part of the show. And in the meanwhile, this looks to me like a bunch of marshals arriving. Customer safety. Ami. Ami. Pronounce it right. Thank you. Okay, well, the public have been let in. There is one Meta Sound loudspeaker product I haven't actually had a look at, and these are Ami's. I pronounce it Amy. Ami, A M I E. It's a 2.1 system, and uh, this is the fold back for the desk. This is uh, what Mick and uh, Jay get to listen to when they're sitting here at this fabulous Midas mixing desk. Call it fabulous. They um, had some issues tonight. But just take a look at the screens on this thing. Front of house here for Metallica and the O2, which is still need a fold back speaker. And that's where they come in. Other brands of fizzy drinks are also available. Oops, that was a bit fast. Underneath the desk is a subwoofer. There we are, nestling under the desk, the subwoofer as part of the 2.1 system of the army. That's uh, that's loud equipment. It was rocking back here. So this is a fairly tired Adam Rayner sitting at the back of the O2, having had a look at a whole load of uh, Mayer sound kit. I think I've got a diagram of uh, every single box that's in here. The most amazing thing is that this is really all about a blank canvas. This is not audio equipment that has a flavour of its own. The real issue, though, is the sheer muscularity and power of this stuff because it really, truly is breathtakingly potent. Loud enough for Metallica at the O2. Fabulous for everything else as well. <coughs> this is Adam Rayner signing out for Talk Audio TV at the O2. Enjoy the gig, guys, and uh, yeah, I hope Metallica kick your asses. I, I think they pro pro probably will, yes.